Hello YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla electric car video with me, Adam Wellinformed. Do you think all electric cars are too expensive today? And do you believe electric cars do not have practical range in 2022? And what are your thoughts on battery longevity? Do you think it needs to be replaced in just five years time? How about that electrical grid? Surely it can't take everyone having an electric car, right? These are just four common misconceptions about electric cars today in 2022. And there are many, many more misconceptions about electric cars and Teslas circulating around social media and even in the mainstream media for that matter. Contrary to the misconceptions on these topics, there are over 10 million electric cars on the world's roads today. Funnily, that is just a drop in the ocean for personal mobility and the days of consumers actively seeking new petrol and diesel cars over electric cars will soon change from being the safe choice by the majority to being the minority choice. To the hardcore petrol heads that are absolutely adamant, you can't take my beloved petrol car away from me. Relax, I'm not saying that. Here in the UK at least, the government will not force you or mandate you to drive an electric car. You can still own a combustion vehicle and as far as I'm aware, you will have the freedom to make that choice. I suspect for at least the first few years after 2030, there will still be a sizable amount of people that still do continue to own a petrol or diesel power car, mainly but not limited to the nostalgic and entertainment reasons. There's a lot of history with combustion cars, but for the average driver, times are moving on. Owning and operating a combustion vehicle will not be the same as it is today in 10 to 15 years time for a number of different reasons. This is what I believe primarily for the many, owning an electric car will be the main vehicle of choice. Those common misconceptions about electric cars we detailed earlier just aren't true in 2022 and I'm going to explain why it's far school in 2022 to believe them. Then to conclude, I'm going to flash this cheeky adoption curve by Bloomberg and what that demonstrates is just how quickly the tides can turn. So stay tuned for that beauty of a chart. Rightio, before we get into it, don't forget to hit that like button to show me some of your virtual love and maybe slash potentially some support for Tesla EV content. Hit the subscribe button to follow my Tesla EV journey with me. And finally, hit the notification bell so you're notified of all my upcoming electric car videos as soon as they're available. So firstly, probably the biggest misconception about electric cars is that they're all too expensive to buy and own especially with the rise in electric costs. Well, I'm not afraid to say that there is still room for improvement on both accounts. However, and that's a big however, cheaper electric cars are actually here today. Yes, I did say that. Many, many more are coming too. According to the UK's Office for Zero Emissions, which is where most of my answers are being sourced from today, this Gov website states, as of May 2022, 24 models are now priced under 32,000 compared to 15 at the same time in 2021. With production costs reducing, some forecasts show that some EVs could be the same price to purchase as a petrol or diesel car well within the 2020s. Now, contrary to being cheaper to buy, are they cheaper to own, operate and maintain? This answer is a lot more clear cut and as a owner of a Tesla Model 3, not only have I shared all my costs for the first year of ownership, more recently I actually shared in layman's terms, it actually cost me more money to feed my cat than to fully charge my Tesla Model 3 over a month. And believe me, I'm not allowed to purchase the cheaper food so I have to get reasonably decent grub for him. Overall, I've released many different videos on how the cost of owning a ISO alternative to the Model 3, such as the BMW 3 Series, simply does not add up. Long story short, despite the BMW being cheaper to acquire, over the average term of four years, doing average standard mileage, refueling, recharging at standard market rates for both electric and petrol, it was cheaper to own the Tesla Model 3 over the BMW. Plus, there are many other ways to reduce your cost of charging, such as utilizing EV tariffs to reduce home charging costs, or utilizing free public charging stations if available in your area. As the research, and more importantly, the data demonstrates, cheaper electric cars are actually making its way to the market. And this trend is expected to continue as technological advancements and production volumes grow with adoption, and prices are then expected to drop well within the 2020s. But what about used EVs, Adam? There's not enough of them, and they're not cheap enough to buy either. And I think that statement's right because there's a really simple explanation as to why there isn't a whole lot of electric cars on the used car market in comparison to 
its petrol and diesel cousins. And that's because EVs are not being produced in the same mass volumes as those combustion cars with decades of production behind them. Inevitably, there is a time lag between the first sale and then the subsequent used car sale. It's simply not had the same benefit of having decades of used car supplies. And even since 2020, when ice production volumes dropped from previous highs, it's still not actually recovered. And that has actually rippled into the used car market and prices of used cars are now higher than before as the inventory of used cars move lower due to that lack of supply. And as production and the subsequent sales of electric cars start to increase, those EV inventories should actually begin to grow. Keeping with the topic of used electric cars, why would someone buy an electric car if the battery is going to go poof or bang and needs to be replaced after five years? Interesting theory, isn't it? There's also a crazy stat about electric car ownership, and according to ZapMap, only 1% of EV drivers want to switch back to petrol or diesel. Surely that speaks volumes, if they own and operate those vehicles in their day-to-day -day lives. I mean, why would there be 10 million EVs in the world today if it wasn't a proven concept? You know, EVs are apparently expensive and then they're incapacitated or the battery dies after five years. Surely they're just two contradictory statements right there, right? Why would someone own a car that doesn't work after five years and pay over the odds for it? Makes no sense to me and the office of Zev as they begin to spit facts here too. I quote, There is no evidence to suggest the lifespan are any different from a petrol or diesel vehicle. So where do these theories stem from? If you've got any ideas, you know, drop them in the comment section below because I'm interested to hear them. For your reassurance, most EV batteries have warranties of around 8 years or 100,000 miles, whichever one comes first, but are expected to last much longer than that and their lifespan continues to improve. EVs are in daily use across the UK's roads as taxis and in other high mileage roles. I know for my Tesla Model 3, it's identical to those terms quoted, but beyond that time frame, what's the outlook, Adam? It's a valid question to ask and we can only turn our heads to the Tesla Model S which has been around long enough to answer that question and looking at this chart we can see the data that Tesla has obtained direct from its fleet and after 200,000 miles the battery tension is around the low 90s to mid 80% of its original capacity. Again that's hard data direct from the source not from your mate down the pub who's never even sat in an EV. In the impact report where this chart can be found, what really strikes me for battery health is that the batteries are designed to outlast the car itself. Now picture this, it's predicted a vehicle in the US is scrapped after roughly 200,000 miles and 150,000 miles in Europe. That battery health chart at 200,000 miles doesn't look too bad now and that's with battery tech from over 8 years ago. Imagine what battery technology is like today and the data that will follow that. So batteries aren't going to go poof or bang after five years. It's not something that's likely to happen based on the data that we've just seen. Okay, so now you're going to tell me you don't want an electric car because the range is going to be so bad and that's not a practical car to actually have, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if I rub my office for Zev crystal ball, what does it say? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? Not quite sure they actually go hand in hand, but you know, the answer is a shocker. 99% of car journeys in England are actually under 100 miles. There are over 20 models that quote over 200 miles worth of range and a chunk of them are available for under £30,000. You can get models over 300 miles and location dependent over 400 and 500 miles now. This fear of range anxiety is simply not felt amongst electric car drivers. And remember that stat I mentioned earlier from ZapMap? Only 1% of EV drivers would go back to driving a petrol or diesel car. And this is because they've experienced it themselves and they've come to terms that they won't run out of charge based on their same driving habits that they already have. This is real stats and real data from people that actually drive EVs. But what about the other 1% of car journeys, Adam? It's not possible to travel across the country in an electric car, is it? Well, it's the same procedure what you do for any road trip now. You simply type your destination into the sat-nav and your car will literally tell you when and where to stop and charge along the way. Travelling just 200 miles is over 3 hours worth of driving and charging back to 200 miles in under 20 minutes is not uncommon these days. Naturally though, that is depending on the vehicle that you have in the charger of choice, but to reassure you on the 1% of journeys, people literally drive across continents in their electric cars. You can simply type into YouTube electric car long trip or Tesla long journey and there's literally catalogues full of people that do that regularly. So 
My advice here for the average drivers, based on this data, you should see no difference in your range requirements for 99% of your journeys. And that 1% is doable and naturally there are different EVs that will make that 1% quicker and more convenient. And that's no different concept from owning a saloon slash sedan to a small city hatchback car today. But the fear of that 1% will only evaporate as range within EVs increase and those battery costs continue to fall. And did you know that battery costs have actually fallen 80% since 2010? Yeah, me neither. The final misconception that I want to tackle before concluding with electric vehicle adoption is to reassure you that grids around the world will be able to cope with electric vehicles. Here in the UK, smart charging is just one of the methods being utilised to maximise capacity on the grid today. And thanks to smart technology, consumers can charge their vehicle overnight when electricity demand is low and as a result, consumers can get access to preferential discounted rates as a result. This technology combined with the growing overall capacity and other methods all are in the hands of Ofgem, the UK's energy regulator. They frequently state that they are confident there will be no issues down the line as a result of EV charging and to date the grid has not collapsed. And that's not thanks to coal either. In the UK, coal makes up very little of our fuel mix. It's like 1-3% to over a year and we can easily go for days without burning coal. An electric car will effectively get cleaner and cleaner as the grid continues to increase capacity and replace those fossil fuels within its fuel mix. The office for ZEV also states that 95% of our electricity comes from low carbon sources by 2030 and by 2035 all of our electricity will come from low carbon sources subject to security of supply. So with every year, the electricity will get cleaner and cleaner, and yet the power should be exactly the same. It's not like petrol where the performance and efficiency will vary dependent on what fuel that you use for your vehicle. All electricity is effectively the same. So to conclude, despite these common misconceptions floating around, EV adoption continues to grow. With every year, EVs are getting more sophisticated and refined. They deliver more range, charging speed and overall bang for buck than their previous iterations. Despite future vehicles offering that ever greater bang for buck, mass EV adoption is already underway based on what Bloomberg are reporting with this article and chart. It's significant because if it comes to fruition, then we could have this S-curve adoption. And what does that mean, you say? Well, follow the trend of the chart and I think you'll work out what we anticipate for EV sales based on this data. Electric cars have solved many of these perceived issues already and they will continue to enhance its offering to consumers over the years to come. So what do you guys think? To electric car owners or to Tesla owners, do you think or hear about these misconceptions regularly? And to those non-EV drivers, is there anything holding you back from purchasing your own EV? Let me know in the comment section below. If you're not sure what to comment and you want to show me you got this far in the video, you could simply comment 99% satisfied, purely because I'm not being used to told that. I mean, I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for the support. <laughs> if you're not done so already, please hit that like button, subscribe, share the video with your friends and family or any other group that may find it beneficial. And as always, you guys have been great and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.